Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll for input on future builds, and subscribe for better empathy. Maybe. Today we're embracing our dark side and building Raven. As the daughter of Trigon, Raven is understandably angsty. Thankfully, she can channel her emotions into powerful magic to protect the world and save the day, occasionally from her demon dad. Every family has their issues. And here it goes, I'm just a kid. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need empathy to feel all the feels that can be felt. Next, we'll channel darkness to make our demonic heritage a good thing. And finally, we'll make sure that we can float around and get ourselves where we want to be. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, and hey, no pressure for multiclassing this time, so that's fun. Charisma's number one here. Your magic comes from your heritage, not studying or praying. Wisdom next, we need to have superhuman levels of insight. Dexterity after that, Raven is almost an acrobat in terms of nimbleness. We need constitution to maintain focus for our spells and also for health so that we don't die. Intelligence is a little low, but we don't really need it for anything. And speaking of skills we don't need, how about strength? Yeah, we're gonna dump strength. Raven is a half demon, so for race, I'll go with tiefling. There are more fiendish options for a tiefling from the unearthed arcana entitled fiendish options. Coming from the devilish line of Fierna gives you plus two charisma and plus one wisdom. You also have the friend's cantrip, which gives you advantage on charisma checks against one target for a minute. They'll know that magic was used on them after the spell is over and most likely not be a fan of your emotional manipulation. Tieflings also get resistance to fire damage from infernal resistance and 60 feet of dark vision. For your background, take the far traveler for insight and perception proficiencies. Raven gets her powers from her father's side of the family, so we'll be making her a fiend warlock. First level fiend locks get dark one's blessing, letting you gain temporary hit points equal to your warlock level plus your charisma modifier when you take out an enemy. For your cantrips, grab Eldritch Blast, the bread and butter of a warlock. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d10 force damage. Mage Hand lets you pick up objects weighing 5 pounds or less and activate non-magical items or traps without being next to them, so you can safely answer the question, what does this button do? For your spells, grab Arms of Hadar. It summons dark tendrils that smack creatures around in front of you if they fail a strength save of 8 plus your charisma modifier plus your proficiency. They take 2d6 necrotic damage and can't take reactions. If they succeed, they take half damage and do whatever they want with the reaction. Hex curses creatures that you can see as a bonus action. It adds 1d6 necrotic damage to attacks you make against them and gives them disadvantage on ability checks of your choice. If you drop this creature to zero, you can transfer it to another creature and it lasts up to an hour as long as you hold your concentration. Second level warlocks get Eldritch Invocations. Agonizing Blast lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage you're dealing with your Eldritch Blast. Armor of Shadows lets you cast Mage Armor on yourself at will, making your AC 13 plus your Dex modifier. Third level warlocks can get a Pact Boon, a gift from your dad. Take a Pact of the Chain, which lets you cast Find Familiar as a Ritual, letting you summon a Spiritual Raven. You can take an action to look through its eyes and move it around as you want, and you can cast Touch Range spells through it. The Raven can also attack because this is a Warlock Find Familiar, but at most it's going to deal one piercing damage and it only has one HP, so don't try and make it a fighter, please. You can also cast second level spells. Misty Step lets you teleport up to 30 feet as a bonus action. Darkness is a spell that creates a 15 foot radius of darkness that even dark vision can't see through. Any light not produced by a spell of third level or higher doesn't get through it. Use this to hide your party or blind an enemy you're not planning to shoot at. Also, you can cast Charm Person once per day thanks to your tiefling ancestry. It forces a wisdom save on a creature if they fail their charm for one minute. Fourth level warlocks get an ability score improvement or a feat. The empathic feat superpowers your insight abilities, raising your wisdom score by one and doubling your proficiency bonus for insight checks. You can use a full action to make an insight check against an enemy's deception check for advantage on an attack roll or ability check. That last part actually isn't very great, just attack twice. And enjoy the really high insight checks. For your spell, this level hold person paralyzes a humanoid that fails a wisdom save for one minute. They re-roll the save on each of their turns. Fifth level warlocks get another eldritch invocation. One with the shadows lets you turn invisible in areas of dim light or darkness until you move or take an action. For your spell, Hunger of Hadar creates a 20-foot radius of goopy, unknown terror and darkness. This blocks out all light and deals 2d6 cold damage to creatures that start their turn in that space, and an extra 2d6 acid damage to those that fail a dex save in that space. It lasts for up to a minute if you maintain concentration, and is guaranteed to elicit gasps from the rest of your party the first time you explain what it does. You can also cast Suggestion once per day because of your infernal ancestry. When you cast it, a creature makes a wisdom save, or they have to try and do something that you suggest that isn't directly harmful to them. It can last up to eight hours depending on your concentration. Empathy, that's a powerful thing. Six level fiend warlocks get Dark One's own luck, giving you a d10 to add to an ability check or a saving throw each short rest. For your spell, grab Mirror Image. It takes an action to cast and creates three mirrory or shadowy for flavor. When a creature is trying to hit you, roll a d20. If you've got three copies, a six or higher means that they hit one of your copies. If you have two copies, it's an eight, and if you've got 
not 1, it's an 11. They have an AC equal to 10 plus your dex modifier, and if they're hit, they disappear. 7th level warlocks get another Eldritch Invocation. Grab Grasp of Hadar, which lets you pull a target 10 feet closer to you when you hit it with an Eldritch Blast once per round. You can also learn 4th level spells. Dimension Door lets you teleport up to 500 feet as an action, and you can bring a friend with you through your spooky dark portal. 8th level warlocks get an ability score improvement. Bump up that charisma and dexterity to raise your spell saves and give you a better AC. For your spell, Banishment sends a creature that fails a charisma save to a harmless demiplane for up to a minute, depending on your concentration. If they're not originally from the plane you're on, they go back to their own plane, and as long as you don't end the spell early, they stay there. Good for getting rid of any relatives who come to visit and overstay their welcome. Ninth level warlocks get another invocation. Ascended Step lets you cast Levitate on yourself at will. This means that you can move through the air with a speed of 20 feet per round. For your spell, hold monsters like hold person without the humanoid restriction. They fail a wisdom save, they're paralyzed for a minute. It's nice, especially against scarier monsters. Tenth level fiend warlocks get fiendish resilience, letting you pick any type of damage you want to resist at the beginning of any day. So if Slade's giving you grief, resist some slashing. If Blackfire's coming to town, throw up some radiant resistance. Eleventh level warlocks can use Mystic Arcanum. It's an extra spell slot of the sixth level. Arcane Gate creates two portals, one within 10 feet of you and one within 500 feet of you that creatures can move through. It lasts for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration. This helps you move all the titans into or out of the fray. Twelfth level warlocks get an ability score improvement, camp off your charisma for a wonderfully high plus five modifier. You also get another invocation. Relentless Hex lets you teleport up to 30 feet to be next to a creature you cast Hex on. For another way, you can jump around the battlefield. 13th level warlocks get a 7th level Mystic Arcanum. Plane Shift lets you and up to 8 creatures teleport to another plane of your choice. You can also use this to make a melee spell attack against a creature. If it hits, they still get to make a charisma save to avoid getting sent to another plane. If they get sent there, they're stuck there and they have to figure out how to get home on their own. So completely remove the big bad evil guy from the story, then watch your DM explain why the Barbarian King also knew Plane Shift. 14th level fiend warlocks get another kind of plane shift, but this is like a plane shift day trip. Naturally, it's called Hurl Through Hell. Once per long rest, you send a creature you've hit with an attack on a one-round vacation to the lower planes of hell. They bounce back at the end of your next turn and take 10 d10 psychic damage because of the mental trauma. That psychic damage is probably why Raven doesn't visit her family often. 15th level warlocks get an 8th level mystic arcanum. Dominate monster lets you take complete control of a monster for an hour depending on your concentration. This is after they fail their wisdom save, of course, which they get to re-roll when they take damage. You also get another invocation and repelling blast lets you push a target you hit with an Eldritch Blast by 10 feet. 16th level Warlocks get an ability score improvement, grab some more dexterity for higher AC with your Armor of Shadows. 17th level Warlocks get a 9th level Mystic Arcanum, and Astral Projection is funky. You and up to 8 willing creatures project your astral body to the astral plane. Your body stays on the material plane, is connected to your astral form with a silver cord that becomes invisible one foot away from you. Your astral form replicates your physical form in terms of abilities and possessions. When you move through portals on the astral plane, it brings your body with you through the cord. There are even more details. This is one of the longest spells in the player's handbook. Just check it out for more specific stuff. Astral projection is one of Raven's main abilities, but if there isn't a narrative reason to use it, maybe swap it for another spell. It's kind of like a plunger. You won't need it often, but if you do need it, no other tool's gonna do it. That might be a place to end the build, but we're so close to level 20, let's just finish this off. 18th level warlocks get another invocation, go for Misty Visions. It lets you cast Silent Image without spell slots. That means that you can create an image that fits in a 15-foot cube. It can be seen through with an investigation check against your spell DC, and fails to hold up to physical inspection. I'd use it to create some badass shadows to aid in an intimidation check, but you can do whatever you want with it. 19th level warlocks get an ability score improvement, and I'd say raise your wisdom for better insight checks, but at this point you have a plus 15 modifier, plus 16 is just overkill. So grab some more constitution for a late game HP boost and better concentration. 20th level warlocks get Eldritch Master, letting you regain all your packed magic slots after a full minute of asking your patron for more spell slots. Keep in mind this is just the four fifth level spell slots you have, it doesn't count for your mystic arcanums. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how good of a build this is. First, I know I throw around mobility options a lot, but teleportation makes a few extra feet of monk movement look quaint. You can run up walls, that's cool. I can bring the whole party to an elemental plane. Second, Eldritch Blast is a meme, but there's a reason it's so popular. I've got a ranged spell attack that can deal 4d10 plus 20 force damage, which isn't as commonly resisted as piercing, and you can push and pull targets to mess up their positioning. Speaking of enemy positioning, you can position your enemies into other planes, removing them from initiative order, which is huge when you only have five party members and all of them are teenagers. For weaknesses, warlock slots are unique, which is mom speak for bad. I've always thought it was funny that warlocks 
basically sell their soul to someone, effectively attaching a narrative penalty to the class for less slots than a sorcerer who is just born good at casting. You also haven't invested much into damage other than your Eldritch Blast, so if something resists your saves, sorry, they're not going anywhere. Lastly, and this isn't necessarily a bad thing, but your DM is probably going to incorporate your patron in a way that sucks for you. If you're emotionally prepared for the pain that a good aligned fiend warlock is set up for, enjoy. Just don't say I didn't warn you. Emotions. Even negative ones are powerful things. Control yours and channel them into some sweet spells. Just remember Raven's a sad girl for a reason. Family issues can be enough to drive anyone over the edge. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make new builds every week. The Teen Titans are a great team of young heroes, but to me, the Ninja Turtles are the ultimate child army. Vote in the poll for Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, or Michelangelo. That's right, there are four options this week. It's a big deal. We'll be back next week with another godly video, so come back for that.